Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death. In the embrace of Mesmer's flame. <laughs> Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I will explain in detail how you can create an insanely powerful Fire Knight build to completely break Shadow of the Air Tree. Because of its absurdly high performance and its vastly wide versatility, the Fire Knight Razor is currently the best colossal sword you can find in Elden Ring. This weapon can be obtained quite early on the DLC, which means that you can start using this build before facing any major boss. Of all the colossal swords, this blade gathers the best features of each one and uses them to display a fully destructive combat style. This weapon is extremely easy to use, very enjoyable to play, and it fits it's perfectly fine on every type of player. By itself, it's already more than decent, but under the right parameters, this Grazer can outperform the most broken weapons of the game easily. First of all, I'm going to talk about the main features of the weapon, I will explain the details of the build, then I'm going to test it against the toughest enemies of the DLC and the base game, and I will show you how you can obtain this weapon as fast as possible. So without anything further to say, let's set this game on fire. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. The Fire Knight Razor is an infusible colossal sword with an extraordinary moveset and a really beautiful design. It is one of the most impressive weapons I've tried in this game recently and I can tell you it is really good. This colossal sword has the R1 chain of the God Slayer's Greatsword which is the fastest light attack moveset available in the game for this weapon class. And in the same way it has the devastating R2 thrusting attack from the Zui Hunter. Having both attacks available in only one one weapon makes of the Fire Knight Razor an unstoppable beast. And besides of being incredibly effective, the truth is that those movements are remarkably stylish as well. The stance damage we can deal with the moveset of the weapon is fantastic, so being ready to deal some critical hits is a great strategy. This weapon deals physical and fire damage, and depending on the affinity you choose, it will scale better with certain stats. If we choose the heavy affinity, the weapon will scale A with the strength, and if we choose the king affinity, it will scale A with dexterity. However, the best affinity we can choose is Flame Art. It will allow us to get the highest AR possible for this weapon despite of scaling B with faith. This weapon comes with the stamp upward codash of war by default. Both Flame Spear or Flame Skewer are the best skills we can apply to this blade. Both abilities are great, but Flame Spear is a little bit more effective because it is chargeable, it deals a huge amount of stance damage, and it has a better range. This skill consists on a powerful thrusting charge that throws a fire projectile at a very good distance. Anyways, feel free to use the one you like the most. With this build, you will get the best performance from both of them. Also, it is important to mention that both abilities will cut the weapon on fire for 45 seconds, increasing its damage significantly. Using multiple fire buffs on this build will increase its performance dramatically, allowing you to deal tons of damage in just a few seconds. The only counterpart of using a fire based setup are the enemies that have high resistance to fire damage. Nonetheless, that can be easily mitigated with some useful items of the game, but overall, this build is going to destroy any target quickly. The best part of this weapon is how versatile it is. It allows you to experiment around your playstyle until you find the best configuration for yourself. And because of the high fate requirement of this build, we can use all the mesmers in to control complicated situations against multiple enemies. Playing around the Fire Knight Razor and the incantations can be a very reliable way to use this build too. Those are the main features of this weapon, now let's jump straight into the equipment and the stats. We are going to be using the Fire Knight's Razor on plus 25 with the Flame Spear Ash of War on the Flame Art Affinity and we need the Fire Knight Seal on plus 25 to get the most out of our incantations and to cast our main buffs. You know that you can use any armor set you like but I am going to be using the Fire Knight armor set with the Wind Serpent Helm. The Fire Knight armor will increase the damage of the Mesmer incantations by 5% and the Wing Serpent Helm will increase the damage of the Fire Knight skills by 15%. So we can say that this is the best armor set we can use for this build. The most effective talismans for this build are the Fire Scorpion Charm, the Shard of Alexander, the Godfrey Icon and the Blade of Mercy. But here you have another great alternatives that you can use perfectly fine. The Two-Handed Sword Talisman to get a lot of damage while using the basic moveset of the weapon, the Spear Talisman to deal a lot of more damage while performing piercing attacks when the enemy is attacking you, the Dagger Talisman to increase the damage of the critical hit that 
in this weapon are already pretty good, or the old lord's talisman to increase the duration of your buffs. And as I always tell you, with a defensive talisman you can never go wrong. So with any of those talismans you are going to perform very well with this build. In our flask of wondrous physique we are going to use the blood sucking crack tier and the flame shouting crack tier. But in case you don't want to use the blood sucking crack tier, you can use the stone barb crack tier or any other tier you find useful. And if that's the case, then you can use the ritual sword talisman, cause that way you are not going to be losing HP on time. But that completely depends on your playstyle. A very good optional item for this build are the oil pots. With these bad boys you are going to be able to deal a lot of damage to the enemies that are highly resistant to fire damage. And this weapon consumes a lot of stamina so be sure to craft some pickle turtle legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. It doesn't matter if you use the well pickle turtle legs or the regular version. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on vigor, 25 on mind, 50 on endurance, 22 on strength, 18 on dexterity, and 97 on faith. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be our main boss, but Flame Grant Me Strength is a great alternative too. And with the high amount of faith we have, we can effectively use all the Mesmer incantations. And as you can see, I have my Scattered Tree Blessing on the level 20, and it's very important for you to have it on this level to deal as much damage as possible to the most difficult enemies of the DLC. Now that we have completed and optimized our build, what do you say if we embrace the Mesmer's Flame? Crazy? Crazy? Amazing? I didn't get the fire part. Doesn't matter. We can get it here if we wait for now. Beautiful. Now? Now? And get destroyed, Malenia. Let's go! <laughs> Baby, beautiful! <laughs> Amazing, baby. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go, baby! Come on! Here we go. Amazing. Amazing. Let's get him, baby. Let's go. Clean, 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 clean. Beautiful. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing, baby. Let's go.
Let's go. Let's go, guys.